Greetings guys, this is Blight Trash. I do hope you guys are all doing well. Today I figured we'd do the Chris Fire Navy issue. Um, the TD one in particular, right? There's another one that you can see quite often, which is like the two web beams or pulses. But uh, I figured we'd do the TD one today. So there's a lot of plays you can make with that super strong TD, man. Although it has that reduced uh, range, basically it's got 10k optimal with my skills and a 15k fall off. So it's still pretty sweet. I do have the spec skill to Vs, so the TD is pretty much as strong as it can be. And it's pretty ridiculous, so it basically allows us to do interesting things. Um, I run my CNI with an override. I've noticed that uh, our pulse CNIs tend to run it with a what's called a heat sink just for the extra DPS. But I feel the override allows you to play to the strength of the TD more, and that you're a bit more fast than most um other frigates you'll be fighting, especially like assault frigates and such. And I also like amplify this with using uh, overclocker dose two, which gives us that five percent extra speed. Which is really nice, man. It, it like it doesn't do too much for us against the like dual web hook bells or fire tails, which can still outplay it. But it should give us a bit more of a chance against say like a blaster comet, um, or a rail comet. Although most rail comets run an override themselves and are very difficult to get underneath, the, like um, be faster than right. But um, yeah, it basically allows us to outplay some stuff just because we have like really nice uh, base speed. Mostly against all our assault frigates, because the base speed of the Crucifier Navy issues isn't actually that great. So I find without the override, it's a bit lackluster and it's very easy to outplay the TD. Like, say, if you're tracking disrupting someone and you're faster than them, right? They can just keep you at like 3, 4k or whatever. And basically, just because you're faster, they'll have almost perfect tracking on you. Or, say, if you ultimate range disrupt, say, like a Blaster Comet, uh, it being faster will just keep you at. Uh, keep you closer right and it's going to still apply a lot of dps you might be able to mitigate some of that bit but it's still going to give you a hard time you'll see that with um an already fire tail that we end up fighting just because of the dual webs it has so it can dictate range and kind of outplay our td so i feel like the extra speed kind of helps on that um hopefully these upcoming fights will sort of show that but um yeah enough about the talking guys let's get on to the fights okay here we have two fights against already fire tails one being going well-ish for us, one going for not so well. So basically my goal is to keep this guy at 8k, use optimal range disrupt on his um, artillery, and that brings range down to uh, very significantly down, whereas he'll be either shooting very far fall off or not hitting us whatsoever. You see this doesn't go well for me, he approaches, which is the right call for the fire tail, that's what I'm saying. In this instance, there's no way that we can, without two webs, pull range from this, but say if I had a single web, was able to do this right you can just completely outplay your td but i'm um, just because of the dual webs he sees that we're off on range disrupting he gets closer i make a significant mistake in this fight and burn out my stuff monitor management wasn't quite on point um but you'll see how dire it is like especially against some dual web or something faster than you <laughs> you're gonna have a hard time but um yeah gf man this goes a bit better for me and it basically happens how i want it to right we basically stay this fight at 8k I'm not sure if Lark doesn't notice I'm off to range disrupting him and just keeps at 8k. Because most already fire tails are going to keep you at 7.5k to 8k. So they apply very well. Um, it's a right call by them. It's what you do in the fire tail. You shouldn't really be getting close or orbiting with a fire tail. So you'll see how we are taking an occasional hit. But we're taking a lot less damage than we did in the previous fight. Just because our optimal range disrupt is doing well. Um, another important thing that the fire tail can do just because it has two webs is it disengage if it wants this does end up happening but um thankfully lark sticks around i don't know why <laughs> but um, he ends up sticking around so you'll see if they don't like um adapt to your td you get in a bit of a predicament right because if he could have gotten closer and he could have potentially actually won that but since he was keeping out he's like his range that you'd like to he um ends up failing he does end up pulling a range though and at this point i think he looks to escape but he seems to stick around too long we get a scram again and we end up taking it but um gf boys for this next fight we're up against a hawk um so basically what my plan is going to do since i know that i'm probably going to be faster than this guy we're going to range disrupt his missiles and keep him out far so i'm hoping that he's either using faction or rage the hawk does get a range bonus but um i know that we can get the range of both um faction and Rage, if he ends up switching to Javelin, that's when we need to start to worry. Frankly, he doesn't do that. But um, this is a very interesting Hawk fight he's running. If this was like the Cap-Injected, like, Piff-C type Hawk, 
or duo medium anties. This fight would have gone on a lot longer, but I don't believe he's running assault damage control. Not the most tanky hawk. So, um, yeah, this isn't the normal hawk you'd probably end up seeing. It's still a pretty cool fight. But um, we would have been here for like like 10 minutes or something if it's like one of those um, cap injected talks. <laughs> Just because the like, CNI isn't the most DPS heavy of um, ships, right? I think I'm with like uh, Scorch or something, we're doing like 170 DPS, which is still nice. But it's like, you know, it's not like insane. Like maybe if it's like a blaster bolt and we can often range disrupt our blasters and go with like 4k and use con flag. But mostly we're going to be using Scorch when um, range kiting, right? Especially against something like this Hawk. He doesn't, unfortunately. I can't remember if he's not carrying Javelin or he just doesn't end up switching to it, but bring Javelin. But, and also GF. Man. And this is why we have a chorus there. Basically, I need to get under this guy's guns as quickly as possible. If it's like dual web pulses or something, or even dual web beams, this can pose a real threat. So we need to get as close as quickly as possible, get a TD on him, and get underneath the guns. That's pretty much a win uh, thing here. And I apologize. You need to deal with my, uh, oh, I'd like to say beautiful face. <laughs> But um, this might be something a bit new. Um, I'm going to require at, uh, use a bit more of my stream footage in my fights now, so I can stream more whilst I'm getting fights. So um, if that's a, if you find that that takes away from the content or the YouTube videos, please speak up. Because if it is, then I can probably edit something around it just to make it less like um, what's the word? Uh, distracting, right, from the videos. But um, yeah, most of the, uh, there'll be a lot more uh, stream footage in these with like my uh, face in it, and uh, yeah. So yeah, so once we get under the guns of this chorus, sir, we're pretty much good. Um, just like keep your TD overheated, there's no reason not to. You could potentially skip that AB heat one more extra cycle, but we're good. Um, next, uh, fight's going to be against a Catalyst. Most T1 destroyers are actually really easy to outplay in CNI. Especially if they're not, say, like, something that's like dual web. Um, like a dual web Ari Thrasher, if we were getting in close, would be very rough for us. But once you like basically once we pulled away from that blaster catalyst, got a TD on them, we were good. Um, already Thrasher's gonna be an interesting one. That's probably the more most scary destroyer. Um, dual web beam Coressor could do interesting things if it establishes itself far larger than plex. But um, if it starts at zero or very close and you get under its guns quickly, you're in a good spot, right? A very good spot. So um, once we pulled range from that uh, uh, catalyst, it was pretty much done. <laughs> Unfortunately, just because of how powerful that TD really is. Um, but uh, yeah, we just need to work for his tank and it takes a while because they're low DPS. But I'm um, GF Catalyst. And then next, we have a Corax. This is very similar to how we played the Hawk. Basically, we want to get out of its range, right? Or t uh, up range TD it. Get the range of his missiles and hope that it doesn't switch a Javelin quick enough. This Corax does make the decision and ends up switching the Javelin. You'll see just like how well it does for it if it done it any time sooner it would have potentially won but um he takes too long to make that decision by that time before to work through a bunch of his buffer and uh yeah pretty much the care i believe this is a dual web armor corex i like to run so gf for running that man uh it's a quite an uh, interesting one but had he run javelin at star he would have won this or we would have disengaged right so we'd have a nice little bit of speed on our end but, um, yeah, I should really have my small ANSI prep for heat, just in case it did switch to Javelin. Um, you'll see once it starts to hit us pretty hard. Um, I think a bit of a long time to start it. Just don't expect the amount of DPS that's coming in. Um, but yeah. Nevertheless, GF, yeah, you'll see it now. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you switched, they never would have gone down, but, uh, GF. Okay, here we have a fight against a couple of tactical destroyers. First, Hecate. Um... Knowing, I was curious to see how these would go actually, right? Because um, if you don't know, strategic um, destroyers have a really good resistance. I believe it's sixty-six percent percent resistance to um TDs and sharpshooter. So our TD would still be doing work, but it wouldn't be as powerful as what it usually is, right? So I was curious to see how well we could um outplay these um tactical destroyers. This Hecate seems to be like an all-in gank one. And thankfully, we pull range and uh pretty much the TD him to death, and is uh, great. So this one goes down really easy. I'm also curious, surprised how well it actually went. I did orbit at 6.5k. We could have brought that out over here to our scram if we needed to. Now, we have a couple of fights against Spiffles. These Spiffle fits are interesting. It's not how I'd run them, especially this one this is running. Can't remember what it was, but I can just remember it not being great. <laughs> Sorry, man. But you'll see that this guy's in sharpshooter. He's still getting an occasional little hit on us. 
I'm Marvin 7 half K. We can, as always, like pull it out further. I'm using a T2 scram here to, to like 9k or 10k if we overheat. Alright, you still see that he's getting occasional okay, racing hit. Had I believe he sticks with hail this whole fight, actually. I think that's what also freaked me out. Had he switched like barrage or if he even used like faction ammo, I think he would have done a far better job here. But no, he's low tail, never fail that kind of mentality is bad. Um, and we end up uh, end up taking this um, without taking very minimal. He does end up switching to propulsion there, just I think trying to skip. But doesn't do many good. So this against, I think there's like a 10 in them. Spiffle. I can't remember these goddamn fits. But I can remember them like freaking me out when I checked them after we killed them. But um, this is a bit more of an interesting fight because um, I make mistakes. And I believe he probably makes some mistakes as well. So um, I keep my 7 half and I'm going to auto range just drop them. Same strat. Takes me a bit of a time to react and he gets like a lot of dps in him and for this whole fight he sticks in propulsion right um probably to make most for of his tenement but um that puts him into a very bad situation he can get range on us just because um to um get closer because he's tenement but the sharp without the sharpshooter bonus right he's the td is doing like full effect to him so it's like a uh, very interesting he ends up i'm um, actually going for my drones here and i think that's a bad call on his part um is curious on his swiffles end. I think he just needs to go to like um ta uh, sharpshooter and try and DPS us down. If he just loaded barrage, he would have had his easy right. But I burn out my TD here. This is when things start to get a bit interesting. Um, so we needed to actually be forced to tank, right? My TD's completely gone. He's got a little bit of reps on the go. Now I'm actually starting to worry at this point. I didn't notice throughout all this fight how close he was. I didn't realize until after fight he was actually tenement. So had he wanted to, he could have um dipped. Thankfully, he doesn't know, and he ends up staying. He does sort of dip in and out of his ra uh, range just because of the low agility you have with an oversized prop. It's very hard to manage. I've never really done. I've never been keen on oversized prop fits just for that reason. Like, but um, yeah, he gets in really close here, and basically we're being forced to tank a lot. His DPS is incredibly low for what I was expecting, especially getting this close. But we take it. All right, and to finish it off, hashtag BSB, bro. It's a like sweet fight against Mehen. He's a hook bill. Basically, I go in, I, oh, well, I seen him at range and looking at optimal range to drop him, but he's smart and comes in close, which is very wise. Basically, I then orbit him 2k, and then we're going to basically um, use a precision disruption script and then hope to make it some damage. Just because we're so fast and with that script, you'll see how little DPS he goes down to. What's that, like 200 to 75? <laughs> so we can tank him very easily. I'm very frustrated throughout this bout. This is a very hard play for me as well because he has a TD. I'm not sure if he's off range to drop to me or tracking to drop to me at this point. I don't actually keep too much about tabs and what he's actually doing to me. I'm more focused on myself, like what my TD is doing and what his sort of range is. So that's uh, maybe a, a wrong play on my part. I do check at one point to see. I think he's tracking to drop to me as well as close. Which may, I feel this is the right call. But if he wanted to make this very easy for himself, he could just um, off the range of drop to us and keep us at like 8k or something. But you'll see, I burn out that AB, that's it. That called it. Once that AB was burned, we're done, right? So like that's basically our tank. Um, and then I also try and switch to Scorch. It doesn't happen. He pulls range. And had we maybe got his last couple hits, we would have won. But GF, man, GF. Okay, that's the advice I had for you guys today. I do hope you enjoyed this uh, CNI. It does do some interesting things. Basically, allows you to play stuff like up your class, right? Like, assault frigates are quite easy to handle. Destroyers are very easy. Be interested to see how well we would handle certain cruisers. I think this would actually do quite well against something like a MOA. Or cruisers that don't, like, have a utility high for a, a new. Or very little drones, right? Like, we just kill, like, three drones that the MOA has. I think as. So drone player 15 or 25. And we kill his drones and we should be able to like off the range and drop this gun to like nothing. It's my plan there. A track and drop there or something. So maybe there's some cruisers that we could have handled. But yeah, the CNI is very powerful, man. I, I didn't expect it to do this well. Um also give uh, feel free to give us feedback, right? Um if you don't think the whole like streaming my goddamn weird face should be in these videos, do holler. Like, um, if it's too distracting or whatever. It would make it easier for me if that was, uh, good. Because I could just use them straight from my stream. And I can do, like, more streaming and stuff. But, yes. Uh, that's face ad for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed your Wednesday. And, um, yes, I'll do... Hope to catch you guys in the next one. Do take care. 
Joy Racer Day, all this. Okay, yeah. Goodbye, guys.